This, O oh my best beloved, is a story. A new and a wonderful story. A story quite different from the other stories. A story about the most wise sovereign Suleiman bin Daud, Solomon the son of David. There are 355 stories about Suleiman bin Daud, but this is not one of them. It is not the story of the lapwing who found the water, or the hoopoe who shaded Suleiman bin Daud from the heat. It is not the story of the glass pavement, or the ruby with the crooked hole, or the gold bars of Balkis. It is the story of the butterfly that stamped. Now attend all over again and listen. Suleiman bin Daud was wise. He understood what the beasts said, what the birds said, what the fishes said, and what the insects said. He understood what the rocks said deep under the earth when they bowed in towards each other and groaned, and he understood what the trees said when they rustled in the middle of the morning. He understood everything from the bishop on the beach to the hyssop on the wall. And Balkis, his head queen, the most beautiful queen Balkis, was nearly as wise as he was. Suleiman bin Daud was strong. Upon the third finger of his right hand he wore a ring. And when he turned it once, a fritz and genies came out of the earth to do whatever he told them. And when he turned it twice, fairies came down from the sky to do whatever he told them. And when he turned it three times, the very great angel Azrael of the sword came dressed as a water carrier and told him the news of the three worlds, above, below, and here. And yet Suleiman bin Daud was not proud. He very seldom showed off, and when he did, he was sorry for it. Once he tried to feed all the animals in the world in one day. But when the food was ready, an animal came up out of the deep sea and ate it up in three mouthfuls. Suleiman bin Daud was very surprised and said, O oh, animal, who are you? And the animal said, O oh, king, live forever. I am the smallest of thirty thousand brothers, and our home is at the bottom of the sea. We heard that you were going to feed all the animals in the world, and my brother sent me to ask when dinner would be ready. Suleiman bin Daud was more surprised than ever, and said, O oh, animal, you have eaten all the dinner I made ready for all the animals in the world. And the animal said, O oh, king, live forever, but do you really call that a dinner? Where I come from, we eat twice as much as that between meals. Then Suleiman bin Daud fell flat on his face and said, O oh, animal, I gave that dinner to show what a great and rich king I was, and not because I really wanted to be kind to the animals. Now I am ashamed, and it serves me right. Suleiman bin Daud was really a wise man, best beloved. After that, he never forgot that it was silly to show off. And now the real story part of my story begins. He married ever so many wives. He married 999 wives besides the most beautiful Balkis. And they all lived in a great golden palace in the middle of a lovely garden with fountains. He didn't really want 999 wives, but in those days everybody married ever so many wives, and of course the king had to marry ever so many more just to show that he was the king. Some of the wives were nice, but some were simply horrid, and the horrid ones quarreled with the nice ones and made them horrid too. And then they would all quarrel with Suleiman bin Daud, and that was horrid for him. But Balkis, the most beautiful, never quarreled with Suleiman bin Daud. She loved him too much. She sat in her rooms in the Golden Palace, or walked in the Palace Garden, and was truly sorry for him. Of course, if he had chosen to turn his ring on his finger and call up the genies in a fritz, they would have magicked all those 999 quarrelsome wives into white mules of the desert, or greyhounds, or pomegranate seeds. But Suleiman bin Daud thought that that would be showing off. So, when they quarreled too much, he only walked by himself in one part of the beautiful palace gardens and wished he had never been born. One day, when they had quarreled for three weeks, all 999 wives together, Suleiman bin Daud went out for peace and quiet as usual, and among the orange trees he met Balkis, the most beautiful, very sorrowful, because Suleiman bin Daud was so worried. And she said to him, O oh Lord, and light of my eyes, turn the ring upon your finger, and show these queens of Egypt and Mesopotamia and Persia and China that you are the great and terrible king. But Suleiman bin Daud shook his head and said, O oh lady and delight of my life, 
Remember the animal that came out of the sea and made me ashamed before all the animals in the world because I showed off? Now if I showed off before these queens of Persia and Egypt and Abyssinia and China, merely because they worry me, I might be made even more ashamed than I have been. And Balkis, the most beautiful, said, O Lord, treasure of my soul, what will you do? And Suleiman bin Daud said, O lady and content of my heart, I shall continue to endure my fate at the hands of these nine hundred and ninety-nine queens who vex me with their continual quarreling. So he went on between the lilies and the loquats and the roses and the cannas and the heavy-scented ginger plants that grew in the garden, till he came to the great camphor tree that was called the camphor tree of Suleiman bin Daud. But Balkis hid among the tall irises and spotted bamboos and red lilies behind the camphor tree, so as to be near her own true love, Suleiman bin Daud. Presently two butterflies flew under the tree, quarreling. Suleiman bin Daud heard one say to the other, I wonder at your presumption in talking like this to me. Don't you know that if I stamped my foot, all Suleiman bin Daud's palace in this garden here would immediately vanish in a clap of thunder? Then Suleiman bin Daud forgot his nine hundred and ninety-nine bothersome wives, and laughed till the camphor tree shook at the butterfly's boast. And he held out his finger and said, Little man, come here. The butterfly was dreadfully frightened, but he managed to fly up to the hand of Suleiman bin Daud and clung there, fanning himself. Suleiman bin Daud bent his head and whispered very softly, Little man, you know that all your stamping wouldn't bend one blade of grass. What made you tell that awful fib to your wife, for doubtless she is your wife? The butterfly looked at Suleiman bin Daud and saw the most wise king's eyes twinkle like stars on a frosty night, and he picked up his courage with both wings, and he put his head on one side and said, O oh, king, live forever. She is my wife, and you know what wives are like. Suleiman bin Daud smiled in his beard and said, Yes, I know, little brother. One must keep them in order somehow, said the butterfly, and she has been quarreling with me all the morning. I said that to quiet her. And Suleiman bin Daud said, May it quiet her. Go back to your wife, little brother, and let me hear what you say. Back flew the butterfly to his wife, who was all of a twitter behind a leaf, and she said, He heard you. Suleiman bin Daud himself heard you. Heard me, said the butterfly. Of course he did. I meant him to hear me. And what did he say? Oh, what did he say? Well, said the butterfly, fanning himself most importantly, between you and me, my dear, of course I don't blame him, because his palace must have cost a great deal and the oranges are just ripening. He asked me not to stamp, and I promised I wouldn't. Gracious, said his wife, and sat quite quiet, but Suleiman bin Daud laughed till the tears ran down his face at the impudence of the bad little butterfly. Balkis, the most beautiful, stood up behind the tree among the red lilies and smiled to herself, for she had heard all this talk. She thought, If I am wise, I can yet save my lord from the persecutions of these quarrelsome queens. And she held out her finger and whispered softly to the butterfly's wife, Little woman, come here. Up flew the butterfly's wife, very frightened, and clung to Balkis's white hand. Balkis bent her beautiful head down and whispered, Little woman, do you believe what your husband has just said? The butterfly's wife looked at Balkis, and saw the most beautiful queen's eyes shining like deep pools with starlight on them, and she picked up her courage with both wings and said, O oh, queen, be lovely forever. You know what menfolk are like. And the queen Balkis, the wise Balkis of Sheba, put her hand to her lips to hide a smile and said, Little sister, I know. They get angry, said the butterfly's wife, fanning herself quickly, over nothing at all, but we must humor them, O oh queen. They never mean half, they say. If it pleases my husband to believe that I believe that he can make Suleiman bin Daud's palace disappear by stamping his foot, I'm sure I don't care. He'll forget all about it tomorrow. Little sister, said Balkis, you are quite right. But next time he begins to boast, take him at his word. Ask him to stamp and see what will happen. We know what menfolk are like, don't we? He'll be very much ashamed.